Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Disappointed with the way that we played uh, today. Again, particularly in the first half of the game, I've got to find a way to get this team to be more consistent. So that's on me. I'll have to do a better job. Such is the lot in life of an average inconsistent team with a bad head coach and a mediocre quarterback. You are, by definition, not consistent. That's what you are. Uh, Dennis Allen, after the Saints lose to the Vikings 27-19, I mean, at the risk of being repetitive, it's constantly one step forward, two steps back. Look at where this team was after you lost to Jacksonville. You won your first two games to start the season, then you lose a couple. Then you beat the Patriots, and then you lose two more. That loss to Jacksonville on Thursday night felt pretty awful. What did you do? You went to Indy, you put up 500 yards, you win the game, and all of a sudden it's looking pretty good. You're not going to face Justin Fields with the Bears. You're not going to face Kirk Cousins with the Vikings. You find a way to beat the Bears. You've won two in a row. You get a little help. You're at the top of the division. Man, go to Minnesota. You get to play Joshua Dobbs, who's been there for like a minute and a half. No Justin Jefferson. Saints offense is rolling a little bit. Go win that game. It's three in a row going into your bye. Then you get to play the Falcons, who have a quarterback issue of their own. Things are lining up for the Saints. And what do you do? You go to Minnesota and you let Joshua Dobbs put up 24 points on you in the first half, including a 21-point second quarter. One step forward, two steps back. That is life in the NFL for a mediocre football team with a bad head coach and an average quarterback. You let Joshua Dobbs hang 388 yards on your defense. You know, we're going to talk about the offense in a second, but I am tired of hearing about the Saints defense. I'm tired of hearing how great they are. Because the reality is the numbers don't back it up. You are trending in the wrong direction. Right now you're 10th in the NFL in total defense, but you continue to trend in the wrong direction. Against Jacksonville, you gave up 31 points and 330 yards. Against Indianapolis, you gave up 27 points and 371. Against Chicago, you gave up only 17 points, but 368. They outgained you. You beat the Bears despite them outgaining you. Against Minnesota, you put up tw you allowed 27 points and 388 yards of offense without Justin Jefferson, without Kirk Cousins, with Joshua Dobbs, who's still introducing himself to his teammates. I'm tired of hearing about this Saints defense. You know what they are? They're old. Marcus May and Tyron Matthew are old safeties that are playing at a very low level right now. Paulson Adebo is spectacular. He's awesome. Everything else on your defense is old. Dennis Allen continues to say, got to find a way to get him going in the first half. I don't care. Like, There's this whole attitude about the Saints defense in that, well, they're bad in the first half and they're really good in the second half. Well, how do you get them to play better in the first half? Maybe you do, but I don't really care. The point is, if you got 10 drives and you're you're awful for the first five and really good for the next five, you're still batting 500. You're a 50-50 proposition. I don't care if you're good for the first two, then bad for one, then good for two, then bad for three. However you average it out, it doesn't matter. Because just as easily as you could say, Man, well, how do we figure out to play better in the first half like we do in the second half? You could flip it and say, well, you're lucky you don't play that bad in the second half. You're what you are. That's why they call it an average. And the Saints' averages defensively continue dropping. The one thing Dennis Allen does well, supposedly, is he's a good defensive coordinator. And right now, your defense for the last month stinks. Good to see Chris Olave and A.T. Perry go off. Perry just had two catches, but one of them was pretty spectacular. It was the touchdown reception from uh, from Jameis Winston. Here's how it sounded. Winston to his left. Nothing downfield. Back towards Perry. Jump ball. Simultaneous. It's a touchdown. That was uh, Adam Amin on the call from Fox. Um, 
the catch by Chris Olave was awesome as well. The Saints would get the two-point conversions with Jameis in there. You got within a possession. But boy, did you get to see both the good and the bad of Jameis. First possession, he's in there. Three plays, boom, touchdown to Chris Olave. You get the two-point conversion. You have life. Next possession, he misses on his, on his next three passes. Then he throws a pick. And then he throws another pick. You had three possessions with an opportunity to tie the game with Jameis. And he ends up throwing two picks. He has a three and out and two picks. And they were bad picks as well. I mean, that's just life with Jameis. He's going to make the spectacular play, and then he's going to throw picks. So, I mean, it's what he is. Uh, the flip side of it is, at least Jameis is exciting, moved, moved the ball, and scored points. Uh, Derek Carr, while he was under center before he was injured, threw for 64 yards in the first half. Let me say that again. Derek Carr threw for 64 yards in the first half. Let me clarify in case you missed it. The quarterback whom you paid $150 million to come in and be your franchise that you were committed to threw for 64 yards in the first half. In the year 2023, this isn't wing T, wishbone, no face mask football. Presidents have long beards football. It's 2023, and your quarterback threw for 64 yards in the first half. Let's face it. If you're not ready to admit it yet, you're stubborn. You basically set a match to $150 million when you paid Derek Carr. Scone was right about that one. I ain't right about everything. A lot of you say I'm mostly not right about everything or anything. Scone was right about that. And yes, I just referred to myself with a nickname in the third person. Derek Carr is has always been an average quarterback. Mediocre at bet at best just on the outside of the top 10. And he continues to prove it over and over again. He is taking you nowhere. Hope he's okay sincerely. No he took a high low hit from two LSU guys, Jaqueline Roy and Daniel Hunter. Incidentally, the two guys everybody called girl names, Jacqueline Roy and Danielle Hunter. But anyway, Certainly didn't hit like girls in that play. Beat the hell out of Derek Carr in that play when they high-load him. But sincerely hope Derek Carr is okay. But that has nothing to do with my feeling about him as a quarterback, which has is unchanged. He has, for his entire career, been a very average football player. Paulson Adebo was awesome. Nine tackles, two pass breakups. He had an interception that was negated by a penalty because, you know, you're just not a smart football team. Carl Granderson was offsides. Carl Granderson's been great this year, but he was offsides on the interception. How about you take a first down off the board because you line up off, you get a wide receiver line up offside, a, a full yard offsides. Oh, Jesus, this team. And then how about old Pete Carmichael? We thought, we thought he'd figured it out, didn't we? Didn't we, th- did, didn't we think fi- that Pete Carmichael figured it out? The last two weeks? Boy, man, they fi- finally, fi- it took him a minute, but finally, oh, sneaky Pete. He found it. He found Taysom Hill's role, didn't he? He figured it out against Indy. Nine carries, 63 yards, a couple of scores. Threw a pass for 44 yards. Man, it was looking good against the Bears. 11 carries, 52 yards, caught a pass. Ah, oh, they found their groove with Taysom. Really good around the red zone. Threw a touchdown pass. Surely they're going to lean on Taysom. Mike Triplett shared that stat. Saints 17 and 1. When Taysom Hill has at least seven carries. Yeah, you found it. Lean on Taysom. Go up to Minnesota. One carry, six yards. Idiot. But Matt, they were down, so. You had the entire fourth quarter where it was a one possession game. You could have leaned on him. You didn't. Because you're not good. Your head coach is a joke. Your offensive coordinator is way over his skis and was nothing more than a sidecar to Sean Sean Payton. And both of your quarterbacks are inherently flawed. One step forward, two steps back. Y'all, they may come out of their bye and do exactly what they did a year ago. Remember what they did last year coming out of their bye? Their bye was late in the year. They lost that that Sunday night game or the Monday night game to Tampa. Remember that? (laughs) When Mark Ingram ran out of bounds. They blew that lead. They go into their bye. They come out of their bye. They beat Atlanta. They beat Cleveland in that negative 10 game. And then they beat Philly. 
without Jalen Hurts. But they won three in a row. And then they lost 10-7 to at home to the Carolina Panthers because that's what bad teams do. One step forward, two steps back. That's the New Orleans Saints. And that's what this team is. You had an opportunity to go to Minnesota to play a backup quarterback without their best offensive player to get a win, to be two games over 500, a commanding game and a half lead in a bad division going into your bye when you come out and you're playing the Atlanta Falcons. Instead, you threw up on yourself in Minnesota. And that's what you do when you're a bad team. And the New Orleans Saints are a bad football team. I love this franchise. This franchise is part of my core. And I will be a Saints fan until the day that I die. But I loathe this team. I loathe its coaching staff. I loathe its character and makeup, which is non-existent. I loathe its complete lack of give a damn. It is so frustrating to watch this football team incompetently run by a bad head coach, a terrible offensive coordinator, and a mediocre quarterback. Yet over and over and over again, we waste time. We waste time on, on our Sundays. We waste moments of our lives watching this crap, knowing it's going to happen week after week after week. They are setting us up to let us fall. It's Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. That's what this is. Over and over again. Just, oh no, we're going to hold it up this time. And then you swing your leg through and you get a concussion because you fall on it. That's the New Orleans Saints. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.